Welcome back to Switched to Linux. Well, today we're just going to do a quick video looking at getting started with elementary OS. I had somebody that asked me about uh, elementary OS isn't necessarily a, a computer power user, just needs something up and running and has chosen to go with the elementary OS route. So I want to go ahead and just do a brief getting started video on this for you. Uh, you know who you are uh, and for anybody else that might want to get started with elementary OS. So um, with this one here, uh, I've already installed it onto the drive. The installation process is just like Ubuntu, Linux Mint, a lot of those other types of distros. So it's just easily go through there, um, you know, drop it on your drive. Very easy to do. So what we're going to do is get started here just with looking at the first log into the computer. Just get a brief uh, overview of the system and go from there. So here we are. Uh, we are on the login screen. So as long as you select in the installer to make sure that you require a login, then you'll be here. Of course, you can add other users to it as well. One of the great things about elementary OS is if this is for a family computer is you can give each kid their own separate account and uh, you can actually set up very good parental controls. So we're going to go ahead and log into this. I don't think that's the password. I got to try that again. All right, there we are. So we're going to log in and I haven't changed anything. All I did is I installed it and verified that it installed. So when we get in here, we have a uh, panel down here, which is very much like uh, what you find on a Mac. In fact, it's set up much the same way. This is your multitasking view, so you can uh, add more desktops, remove desktops over here as well. Um, and then we have the application store. We have system settings, things like that at the upper right. We have our power button, which is going to give us the ability to log out, lock, suspend, or shut down. We have notifications where we can turn on a do not disturb mode. We can turn it off. We can get to our notification settings right here. One of the great things is this will have uh, kind of like a, a uh, Mac. It will have granular control. So what type of notifications? Would you like bubbles? Would you like sound? Would you like notification center? You can toggle those on or off. And then as you install applications that are catered for elementary OS, they will appear in that listing there. All right. Uh, we have our network items over here. We have our audio settings. Of course, if there's anything there, there's our bubble. Uh, here is uh, any sound settings. Uh, so our sound settings here will get us into our sound so you can adjust your audio input or output. Uh, we have our calendar over here and over here we have our applications on the far left. So in here, our basic default view is this. You can do a list view over here, which will break everything down into their individual categories. So depending on which way you like, you can choose whichever direction. Uh, you can drag things down onto the dock as well, uh, which we're not going to do that. And you can drag things around on your panel at the same time. You will get bubble notifications. This indicates that we do have some updates. All right, so inside of the application center, when you load this guy up, uh, you can sort in by your various different things. Now, one of the great things that Elementary OS did is they built in a way that you can actually help support the developers directly from this system. So you see your, there's free, there's $2, $5. These are all suggested things. You can actually come down here and do zero if you are completely strapped for cash. You can. These are ways that we remember to support our developers better. And so just to let you know, you can grab these guys, but these applications that have these, these are generally much smaller projects, uh, individual developers, and giving them uh, whatever you can spare is always good. We do have the option to toggle what is installed and what is not. We have the, um, uh, the update there so it wants to update the individual systems. So this is updating everything. And then these are the individual updates. This is actually something that they added more recently, uh, the granular control over this, if I remember correctly. And uh, I like that. So you have that option there as well. Uh, inside of your system settings, uh, like I said, this is great for if you happen to have uh, kids, you have the parental controls built in. Now it does say that there's no users to edit because we only have a single user over here. So we're going to come in over here. We're going to hit our unlock button. A lot of these system settings require you to toggle this unlock button and hit your main, um, your main, main uh, password. 
Once you get into there, <coughs> excuse me, uh, you'll be able to come on down here to the little uh, plus up here and we'll just go ahead and add. You can add a Sandy user or an administrator. This is the kid and our password. Uh, hopefully it allows me to use kid as the password, does it? Okay, yes, it does. It warns us about a weak password, but it doesn't actually um, it doesn't actually uh, restrict us. So here you can toggle on or off your settings over here. And then here you can restrict when they can get on the internet. Um, so uh, this is individual sites. So of course, if you want to, we've got to unlock this again. I should have picked a better password. <laughs> can type easier. All right, so now that we've unlocked this, we can toggle these settings on or off. This is the parental controls are turned off. This is parental controls are turned on. So if I want to block them from accessing Facebook, um, I can do that. So add the URL. Now they cannot access Facebook. We can also toggle applications um, by coming in here. So if you, know, you don't want them using the calculator for their homework, you, you know, you can block the cal calculator. And then you can limit the uh, you can limit the days so you can say on weekdays on only on weekends or on weekdays and weekends you can set the time you know so they're not going to come down at five in the morning and start messing around on the computer unless you turn it on at five in the morning so the parental col uh, parental controls are excellent here's again our notifications uh, which you can uh, toggle buttons and whatever else on I don't think you can toggle the location of the the individual um, uh, bubbles or not. Not sure about that. Um, here's our default applications. So all of the applications that they give us, uh, they curate this so that it all looks uh, very unified. Um, so if we were to pull these guys all up, uh, you'll see that the, the system does look uh, does look pretty unified. Video is a little bit darker just to see um, you know, makes it easier to look at videos if it's darker. We only have no, we only have a maximize um, button. Uh, we don't have a minimize. You can actually do that. I think it's middle. No, which one is it? There's a, there it is. It's clicking on it in the panel. I knew it was there somewhere, but if you click on it in the panel, uh, then it's going to minimize. So you can toggle them like this. Uh, just toggle them, uh, minimize, um, uh, or back to normal state there. And then of course you can maximize like that. All right, so everything else in here is pretty self-explanatory. User accounts, date and time settings, things like that. I guess the only other thing we didn't actually look at is um, editing the doc, which I believe is also in our system settings. Let's have a look at that. Mm, don't remember where my doc settings are at. Oh, there's desktop. <clears throat> okay, so inside of our desktop, we can pick our wallpapers. Of course, we have a variety of different uh, nice curated wallpapers. You can add your own, I believe, uh, by importing a photo here. Uh, on the dock, you can make the icon size small, normal, or large. Okay, you can also, um, you can also um, focus window as maximized. So this is kind of like the Mac type behavior where it will disappear everything on the screen if you have a window maximized. Uh, this is if you if uh, a window overlaps with the dock or if any window overlaps the dock or if you toggle this, um, then your uh, system uh, hide when not being used. It's going to always be down there, uh, always be hidden unless you do that. So if you toggle this guy off, now the thing will never hide. So there's your dock settings there. Of course, we have it set default, four hot corners. None of them are set to do anything. You can toggle those between a variety of different, different tools as well. So that is, in a nutshell, elementary OS. Uh, you do have a terminal. It's up here. So if you want to install things via the terminal, um, this used to not be able to update well from the app store the first time. I believe that issue is now resolved. So if I hit this update all, uh, you can do that. Some of the limitations you're going to find on elementary OS, there is not a way to be able to work off the desktop. So if you're looking for desktop icons, there is a workaround for it. It's fairly complicated. I have it on one of the videos on the channel. 
Uh, the other thing is, despite this is based on Ubuntu, it does not have PPA support installed by default. So if you do want to use PPAs and also for that matter, uh, .deb files, if you want to use either of those, you do need to enable that feature. There will be some uh, some information online about how to do uh, do those individual things. But on this system, if you go in and just grab everything from the App Center here, you will have a very good, very fluent system that uh, should work pretty pretty much on any system you need it to. Elementary has come a long way. I've been uh, fairly critical of it in the past. Um, it's still not my cup of tea, uh, but for those that are interested in elementary, uh, it is definitely a good viable system for you to check out. So with that being said, uh, thanks for coming along on this very brief little intro to elementary OS. Hopefully this helped you out if you're looking for it. Uh, this is, of course, what, probably one of the distros that I would try if you're coming to Linux from a Mac environment and you're used to this type of layout, this type of workflow. Definitely elementary is worth checking out. Um, I personally prefer my Linux Mint, but that's okay. Uh, the great thing with Linux is there are a lot of different options and options for everybody. So let me know what you think of Elementary. Is this your uh, favorite? Is this the first time you've seen it? Let me know in the comments down below.